Let's take a look at basic animation in 3ds Max. Animation is a series of still images with slight variations shown one after another at a given speed. In traditional animation, to animate the hand of a character moving up above his head, a lead artist draws two key images, one with the hand down, the other with the hand raised. He then hands the two key images to assistants, who draw the necessary in-between images, the interpolation between the two main poses. When using a 3D application such as 3ds Max, you are the lead artist, and the application replaces your assistants. You need to define the key poses over time, and the application creates the in-between frames. These key poses are called keyframes, and they record the state of an object at a given time. Most values can be animated in 3ds Max, but you spend most of your time animating transforms, essentially moving and rotating objects in space. This movie shows how to animate objects in the scene using two animation modes called Auto Key and Set Key. Select this Jeep and select the Move tool. Turn on Auto Key. The interface turns red, reminding you that you are in Animate mode and that most things you do at this point will be animated. The timeline allows you to select a different frame and scrub through the animation. If you move to frame 90, which is 3 seconds of animation, and move the car towards the gate, Auto Key records the change, setting keyframes at frame 0 and 90 to mark the move's start and end. Auto Key always records from the beginning of the animation. And if you scrub the animation, you'll see the interpolation between the two keyframes moving the car. If you want the car to stay in place for a while, say between frame 90 and 150, you can simply copy this keyframe. Shift-drag the keyframe to copy it, then move it to frame 150. The two keyframes are identical, so the car remains stationary between them. The gate would open at this point, and you can animate that in a moment. Now go to about frame 240 and move the Jeep into the compound. You can turn off Auto Key at this point. Take a look at the animation. The Jeep moves, pauses at the gate, and then goes in. However, notice how the Jeep accelerates and decelerates. It makes sense that it slows down before braking at the gate, speeds up again as it enters the compound, and slows down before it stops. But there's an acceleration right after the first keyframe, which looks wrong if you assume the Jeep is coming in at a constant speed. It looks like it's accelerating from a stop, but you can change that by using the curve editor. The left pane shows the animated object and the various transform tracks. Position and rotation tracks have separate XYZ tracks to give you better control over the animation. You can select any track you want to view. The red, green, and blue curve colors correspond to the X, Y, and Z axes in world coordinate space. In this case, only the Y position track has animated data on it, since you only move the Jeep in that direction. The curve illustrates the animation by charting the time and value of each keyframe, and by showing the interpolation between these keyframes. So you can see that this green curve shows acceleration, deceleration at the gate, a pause, then an acceleration and deceleration again. Select the first keyframe. There are a few ways you can change the interpolation that follows it. You can drag its Bezier tangent handle up and down. If you click play, you'll see the change in real time. You can also use one of the key tangent presets to change the interpolation to fast, slow, and so on. At this point, you can click linear to move the car at a constant speed until it decelerates near the gate. Play the animation to see the result. Next, you can animate the gate so that it opens for the Jeep. This type of gate rotates, and notice that its pivot point is in the right location. This time, animate using the Set Key mode, which favors pose-to-pose -pose animation and is a little different from Auto Key. Like Auto Key, it turns the interface red, but it doesn't create keyframes on the fly. In the Key Filters dialog, you can choose what type of keyframes you want to create. In this case, you only need to rotate the gate, so you can turn off everything except rotation. First, select a frame, such as 140, then click the Set Keys button or press K to record the state of the gate manually. 
Notice that it didn't automatically set a key at frame 0 and gives you control over each keyframe instead. Go to frame 180, where the Jeep is passing through, raise the gate and set a keyframe. Remember that a keyframe records the state of an object at a given time, so if you forget to set a keyframe and move the slider, you'd lose the change you made. The gate should stay open for a moment, so at 220 you can set another keyframe for it. Copying the keyframe by shift-dragging it also works. Then, as the Jeep slows down, at about frame 260, close the gate and set a keyframe. Turn off Set Key, go to frame 0, and play the animation. The Jeep breaks at the gate, the gate opens, the Jeep moves in, and the gate closes. Now you can animate this helicopter so that its main rotor blade rotates as the helicopter flies off. However, if you move the body of the helicopter, the blades don't follow it. You need to link the two together in a way that still lets you animate the blades separately from the body. Turn on Link Mode, then drag from the blades to the body of the helicopter. This creates a parent-child relationship, which means that if you move the helicopter, the blades move with it. But if you move or rotate the blades, only the blades move or rotate, not the helicopter. Now you can animate the blades, which need to rotate continuously. Make sure Angle Snap is turned off. Turn on Auto Key, go to frame 20, and rotate the blades about 60 degrees. Scrub the animation. The blades rotate 60 degrees in 20 frames, and after that, nothing happens. Instead of stopping, the blades need to keep rotating 60 additional degrees every 20 frames or so. Open the Curve Editor and find the Rotation Track. It shows rotation only between frames 0 and 20. Select both keyframes and open the Parameter Curve at a Range Types dialog, which offers you different ways to loop animation. Select Relative Repeat, which will loop the animation by adding an extra rotation every 20 frames. If you zoom out, you'll see that the curves show the original 20 frame rotation, and from that point on there's an additional 60 degrees, and another 60 degrees where that leaves off, and so on. So now the blades rotate without stopping. However, the blades speed up and slow down, and the curve reflects this. A constant speed would be more realistic. Again, you can play with the tangent handles, or in this case, make sure all the keyframes are selected and set their tangents to linear. Now the blades spin continuously at a constant speed. They're a bit slow, but you can easily control the speed by adjusting the keyframes. The interval between the keyframes is a bit too long, so instead of rotating the blades 60 degrees in 20 frames, rotate them in 5 frames. Now the blades are spinning a lot faster. Next, you can make the helicopter take off and fly away. Use Set Key, which allows you to move and rotate the helicopter and set keyframes when you need them. Set key filters for both position and rotation tracks. For rotation, make sure that angle snap is turned off and select local mode. Now think about how a helicopter lifts off, hovers, and flies in real life. If it doesn't lift off right away, you can set a keyframe at about frame 10 so that nothing happens until then. Then go to about frame 60 and move it up so that it's just lifting a bit. Towards frame 100, it might rotate a bit. Look at the animation to see where it's going. At about frame 160, it could rotate and lift a bit more. Dip the helicopter forward and set another keyframe. Play the animation. At about frame 220, move it up and forward. Maybe dip it even further. Play with it until it looks good to you. Remember that you can use the shortcut keys to switch between Move and Rotate. It's slowing down at the end here, so you might want to revisit the Curve Editor. 
Select these last keyframes and set them to fast mode so that the helicopter accelerates as it moves away.